Hi guys, it's Harvey from All Parts Pool and Spa. Today we're going to do part two of Haywood Millivolt. And the reason why I'm picking on a millivolt system, please, if you're listening to this, go to part one. All right. I'm going to start training. And the reason why I like start training is on millivolts. It gets you where to need to be. Starts training on safety loops. This is main part on helping you diagnose the problem. Now this is a breakdown of a Haywood heater. It doesn't matter if it's a 150 or 400,000 BTU. They're basically all the same. It's a millivolt heater. All right. And um, here's your igniter. Um, with your um, generator. What happens is when you have a pilot light, that generator brings signal to this gas valve to stay lit. So if you have a millivolt heater and your pilot light is lit and your gas valve is on, okay, and your heater is not firing up, it's more than that likely your generator or your pilot light system. The pilot light system keeps going off and you know how to light it. It's probably the pilot is dirty or the uh, generator is not working or dirty or the contacts to the gas valve are dirty or the gas valve's bad. All right. But say we got our pilot lit, we have our gas on to service, not off, on, just to run. And we got a, this is a pool and a spa combo. All right. We got, this is a usually a three position switch. We got pool, off, and spa. All right. Now we're talking about a safety loop. Like I said, go to part one. And a safety loop on these millivolt voltages are basically just a loop. It goes from A to B to C. It goes on and on and on. Like a Doracell bunny. All right? So we need to pull out our meter and check for continuity. Now, a millivolt heater doesn't push voltage. So everything on your, milli, on your meter has to either beep will show zeros. It has to show a dead short to it. So when you go from wire to wire, physically put your hand on the first wire coming out of your safety loop from your gas valve and go, okay, we go to this um, temp sense. We turn it all the way on if we're using it. We put on home beater on it. Make sure it beeps. It's good continuity. Then we just don't want to check the unit itself. We want to check the wiring. So we want to ohm out the wiring and make sure these stab tabs are clean. I saw it plenty of times where they're dirty and it just would need a new stab tab. Then we go to the switch, if that's the next thing. And we ohm out the switch. If the switch is good, we go and we go, OK. We do the wiring now. We check from point A to point B, which is the gas valve. And we keep on going and going and going through the safety loops. Next one might be this little sensor right here, 26. And it's a rollout sensor. Never bypass them. When I was out in the field, I always saw them bypassed. It is a safety system. When this heat exchanger possibly starts sitting up or clogging or deforming, whatever, and it can't do the proper venting, all right, you're starting to push back heat. Well, if you start pushing back heat, that sensor usually will go. So that's another thing you want to look for is this sensor. You never want to bypass any safeties. 
sailing it out in the field. I don't have one hobby. I bypassed it. The thing went on fire, and I saw one burn half of a house down because somebody bypassed the safety. These are another ones that get you. These two little sensors, the same sensor as this. It's a three pack. All right. You want to make sure they're clean. This is the pressure switch. Keep in mind if you're checking the pressure switch for continuity, you have the water running through it. Okay. Try never to adjust the pressure switch if it failed, even if you're adjusting it. The problem that you're going to have is if you turn off the pool pump, usually this pressure switch will stay on. And so you just created a major problem. So it's the pressure switch. Shut it down, order a pressure switch, and replace it. Never really try to adjust them. Adjusting a pressure switch, I would say it's fine if it's a new heater. It's the only time. If it fails and it's a three-year-old heater, don't try adjusting it. That's a hobby law, okay? Just don't try doing it because there's other things that could go wrong. Then you have sensors on the manifold. They are normally closed, all right? So when you ohm them out, make sure you got that dead short. So you're checking the loop. And on a millivolt, I can't drill it in enough. Well, the meter is showing 0.666 ohms. It's good, but it's not really good. On a millivolt system, it has to show up as a dead short. Bing. It whistles at you, beeps at you. It shows you complete zeros. Whatever kind of meter you have, it shows like when you put your two terminals together on your meter and whichever, whatever your meter does, beeps, the meter goes all the way over to one side, shows you all zeros. That's exactly what you want to see on the safety loop. You clean up all your connections, get your safety loop working, and reconnect it to this gas valve, and guess what? We just fixed a millivolt heater. Now, I'm doing Haywood. As far as a millivolt heater, Jandy, whoever, uh, Pentair, they're all basically the same. You got a generator for this um, pilot system. If it's on and the gas valve is on, you got a safety loop. Ohm it out. Just ohm it out. Start with the basics on a millivolt. This is Harvey from All Parts Pool and Spa on tips on troubleshooting heaters. Keep in mind, I am going to start up my own pool talk. Okay? It's going to be called Pool and Spa Talk in roughly three weeks, where I will be the presenter. You can look through my screen. I'll give you a thing you can type in, and you can call in, and we'll um, have one-on-one -on -one situations. Um, I think I'm only going to be limited to 25 callers out of a time, but we're going to have fun. All right, we're going to have fun. We're going to tell horror stories. If I happen to not know the answer, I know. Hey, listen. I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but, you know, if I don't know the answer, I'll get it. Maybe one of the callers knows the answer. Maybe the callers had it happen to him. There's a lot that never happened to me that I didn't see out there. All right? All right, guys. This is part two. I recommend you see part one. And we're going to start training on Hayward gas heaters. How to start troubleshooting them. I think um, next one we're going to do H series electronic ignition is going to be the next one. Probably tomorrow if I got some time. All right. But we start with millivolt. If you don't understand 
what I said on millivolt. This is the building block on troubleshooting. You do not understand millivolt. Email me. We'll make up some time. I will call you and we'll talk together and we'll make you understand a millivolt system. All right, I can't stress enough. You don't understand the millivolt system and how a safety loop works. You will struggle on every other heater you ever work on. You need to understand about safety loop. There goes my phone, guys. Bye.